Hello, everybody. Andrea Majewski here with Dental Health Tutoring. So this is video, I guess, number two of the day in the life of a dental hygienist. My last one, my first video was me just simply showing you guys what I take to work, my loops, like the, the type of makeup I wear that doesn't come up on the mask, my name tag, my name tag. So this is, I guess, the official video where I start talking about my day as a dental hygienist. Um, because as I mentioned before, when I was a new dental hygienist, even a student, it was just nice to hear what other people um, go through their experiences with patients dealing with difficult patients how you handled it because it takes time to get experience It takes time to get comfortable and knowing how to handle every situation I can honestly say now after 14 years that I'm comfortable handling a little bit of everything I have seen and heard almost everything um, and I do have bad allergies today. So if you guys can see that my eyes are red, I have not been crying. It's just really, really bad allergies. So I apologize. But okay, so I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet and not too long. So it's 1028 in the morning. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the time for you guys. I don't have a script or anything. So I'm just going to kind of talk about my day. And I'm sure as I do more and more of these um, videos of day in the life of dental hygienist, I will get kind of a routine going. Okay, so if you guys want to hear about something, if you have questions, comments, please make sure to comment below. So, okay, so I worked yesterday, so I typically work Tuesdays at the same office. It's anywhere from 3 till 7 30 or 2 till 7 30 or even 3 30 till 7 30. It just sort of depends on the day and the shift. Well, yesterday was a perfect example of I was scheduled from 3 till 7.30 um, and my first patient canceled. And I do like to check in with the receptionist a couple hours before to just kind of ask her what time I start because I tutor full time. So I don't mind coming in later. Um, and I also don't mind coming in earlier if she needs me to see a patient who just hasn't been able to come in, you know, or who we are typically booked four months in advance, which is awesome. But if there's a patient that just really, really needs to be seen, I'm happy to help out, right, with some notice because I do tutor full time, which means I'm busy, but I can also move things around if needed. So anyway, so I had sent her a text a couple hours before and she said, actually, your first patient canceled. Your first patient isn't, is, isn't here now until four o'clock. So I said, okay, you, uh, you know what? Perfect. I know um, a lot of hygienists might have a problem with that because less pay, but I don't mind. I don't mind starting later. It means I can maybe have a coffee in the afternoon. So I was actually pretty happy. Um, so anyway, so I got there. I usually arrive half an hour early because that allows me to um, to get in, you know, to put my stuff away, to, to uh, put my shoes on, to use the washroom, to get some water. Um, I like to look through all of my charts too at the beginning of the day. Um, I do check to see that all of the appointments were um, scheduled properly. You know, like sometimes I will look in the computer and it says um, a nine month um, recall. Yet I check um, the ledger and the ledger is what shows you all of the appointments that the patient has had before. And I will see that, oh, well, they had a nine month recall last time and that was only four months ago. So actually, this would be their four month cleaning because they would not be covered for a nine month recall in four months, you know, so I might change things on the computer so that it it will say actually today is a four month cleaning and not a nine month recall. So A, um, the dentist is aware that she doesn't have to come in to do the check and that we charge accordingly. Because if it was a recall appointment, we would charge a, um, a recall, a half a unit of, of um, polish, um, depending on how long the appointment is, usually about two and a half units of scale or three units of scale, um, a recall exam. If they need x-rays, so we typically take x-rays, it depends on the patient, but, but either every um, once a year, or once every two years, even once every three years, it depends on the patient. So if I were charging x-rays, we take four um, bite wing x-rays if I'm doing that. Um, and some patients do get fluoride every year, depending on if they, if they always have a lot of cavities, then yes, we would give them fluoride at every checkup exam because it's usually not covered at the perio appointments, but sometimes it is. Again, you never know, you have to check the insurance. But um, anyways, you guys, so to make a long story short on that, 
I will check to make sure that the appointment that it says in the computer is indeed the appointment for today. Now, as a new hygienist, this is hard for you to do because you don't have experience yet of you know um, insurance policies, how often the patient's coming in, how, how often they're coming in for a checkup, because sometimes even if they come in for a cleaning every three months, they might be covered for a cleaning and checkup every six months, or it could be a cleaning and checkup every nine months or every year, so you don't know that. Um, it takes experience. Um, I feel lucky that I was a dental um, receptionist first, so I do have that knowledge on insurance a little bit, things change a lot, and then I was a dental assistant, and then a dental hygienist, and then a restorative hygienist. So I do feel like I have a well range. So I do know a little bit more. But anyway, so I do arrive half an hour early. But okay, so what happened yesterday was my four o'clock patient. So she was having LA, so local anesthetic with the dentist first. And then I was seeing her actually at 420. But at four o'clock, she wasn't here. So the receptionist called and, you know, asked if she was coming. Um, and I guess she completely forgot about her appointment. So she just kind of strolls in about 40 minutes later. Okay, her appointment was an hour long. So I obviously couldn't see her. In 20 minutes, you really can't do too much. And it was um, it was local anesthetic with the dentist and quads one and four, I believe. So even if you wanted to do something, there's no point because if you if you give local anesthetic to the patient, well, it's gonna take at least 10 minutes. So then you have 10 minutes to clean? No. But we had another hygienist working that day. So what happened was I actually took her first patient. And then she took that patient who I was supposed to see. But even then, even with moving things around, she only had about 40 minutes to do a cleaning. So what I would have done is said to the patient, well, we can't see you because you're 40 minutes late. Um, you had an appointment. I apologize, but we can't see you. So let's just rebook. But the receptionist being so nice, she did end up seeing the patient and the, and the hygienist, the other hygienist, saw the patient, but she could only do 40 minutes of work. So she was able to give um, the dentist, was able to give local anesthetic, and she cleaned one quad instead of two. Okay, so that's just kind of how we do things. Again, if it was me, I would have sent the patient home because I feel that they need to learn to show up on time. When I have an appointment, I show up half, an, well, not half an hour early, but I show up about 15 minutes early. If, if I myself have an appointment, whether it be to the dentist, whether it be the chiropractor, anything, I show up 15 minutes early. So I don't understand people who show up late. Things happen, you know, if you're coming from out of town, um, an hour away and you got hit by traffic then yes i do think that we should accommodate you we might not be able to do everything but that's not our fault we have other patients who are waiting to see us right but anyway so that's just kind of how we handled it so that's a good explanation of different ways and um different ideas to handle that patient who shows up 40 minutes late okay but i'm sure i'll have more stories about that because it does happen um but that was easy um so I saw um, a patient of the other hygienist. We each saw actually three patients that evening because it was a shorter shift. So normally we'd see about five patients um, in the morning and then five patients in the evening. But since I was just working that kind of evening shift, it was only three patients. So easy stuff. Um, but I want to talk to you guys about that patient that I saw. So he was nice. He seemed fine. Um, but he was due or he is due for his complete oral exam next time. So how it happens, at least in my office, is we do a complete oral exam every three years because that is what insurance covers and it's a good idea to have one. So a complete oral exam is, is when you do um, the bite wing, um, wing x-rays, you take a Panorex if needed um, and you take an anterior and um, an anterior PA of the top and the bottom you do all of the charting. So like a new patient exam, you look to see the existing conditions in the mouth. So if they have composites, if they have amalgams, if their teeth are tipped, crowded, if they have attrition, you would do the probing. So pretty much everything that you would do at the new patient exam. So it does take about a half an hour, you know, to go through everything. Um, we take intraoral photos also, but I like doing the complete oral exams because it does 
give us an overall look of the patient, you know, because otherwise we might be seeing the patient every three months or every nine months, but we don't have that overall look. So if things change, we don't necessarily know because we didn't make a note of it before. So anyways, we do that every three years. But um, this dentist took over a practice of um, another dentist who retired, and he has never done complete oral exams. A lot of his patients didn't even have a new patient exam. Yeah. So having me explain to a lot of patients, oh, you know, we are doing a complete oral exam the next time, and they go, whoa, 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 what's this? Um, okay, it's a complete oral exam. It's no big deal. Um, it just takes a little bit longer. We look inside the mouth. We look to see your existing conditions so that we know what um, amalgams you have, what composite fillings you have. If you have crowns, you know, we just like to go through everything to make sure that your chart is up to date because things change. Some patients still go, whoa, 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 I've never had that. What is this? What is that? Well, it's covered by insurance, so I don't see the big deal anyway, but I guess it's the fear of the unknown. Or some patients go, okay, sure, you know what, whatever, I come here, do what you have to do, that's awesome. Um, it's just the main reason why I tell them is because it does take a little bit longer, so I want them to know how long to book off, you know, for their next appointment. But this particular patient that I had, he was just like, no, 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 I don't, I don't need that, I'm okay. Um, and actually, he didn't say this to me, he said it to the receptionist. Um, I explained everything to him in the room, um, and I, I usually actually book their next appointment in the room, so then that way I can tell them how important it is, because it does happen where the patient will go up to the receptionist and go, oh, I don't know, I don't have to come every three months, I'm fine. And the receptionist goes, okay, what? So I, I like to book appointments in my room so then that way they don't have that leeway of listening to me and then not the receptionist. But I'll talk about more about that in another video. But anyway, so I was going to book his complete oral exam, but I was running behind and that's what the receptionist is there for, to book appointments. So I thought that it'd be okay for her to book it for me and she's awesome, she's fine with that. So I brought him up to the front, he didn't have questions, things seemed fine, he was a nice man. But then the receptionist came to me afterwards and she kind of said to me like, oh, did you not explain the complete oral exam to your patient? I, I go, oh well, yeah, I did, you know, well, like, why do you ask? Um, and she said, well, sorry, allergies. Um, she said, well, he was really upset. He didn't understand why he needed a complete oral exam. He said he's never had one. He doesn't want one. Never mind. I was like, whoa, okay. Like, we're not doing a complete physical here. Like, what's the big deal? But a lot of patients, if they've never had one, I guess they're a little bit fearful. I have no idea. But so anyways, he didn't book it. So, um, when that happens, you know, it is up to the patient, of course. Just leave notes in the chart. I left a note on behalf of the receptionist just saying, um, um, our, res our receptionist talked to this patient, you know, no names mentioned, um, about the complete oral exam. He declined because he felt he didn't need it, and I put that in quotation marks. Um, so he's just having a plain recall exam the next time because he did have his, his four and a half month cleaning with me yesterday. So he's having the complete or sorry, the recall exam the next time, um, because we see him for recalls every nine months. So yeah, that's all you have to do. That's it done, but it will happen. Okay. It will happen. Um, but then I just want to talk about one more patient at the end of the night that I had, and then I will stop the video because it's been already 20 minutes, I think. Actually, no, sorry. Now I kind of forget what time I started. Oh, darn. No, I think it was 1030, right? So, okay. So it's been about 10 minutes, so not too bad. But anyway, so for my last patient, so this is what I, I would like to talk to you guys about too. So this is a patient who, she, her last cleaning was a year ago, not that long. Yes, I know we say they have to come in every six months. Oh my goodness, a year is such a long time. It's really not, you guys. Um, but anyways, her last appointment was a year ago. Um, her teeth looked fine. She's 29. She looked great. You know, I didn't expect there to be a lot there. But this is a great um, learning experience for all of you guys. Um, is that, sorry, I just had something pop up, uh, pop up on my screen. 
her teeth looked fine. I was like, okay. She was booked in to have local anesthetic with the dentist first. And I kind of thought, why is she having local anesthetic? It's not like it's been 10 years. I don't see the big deal, right? I looked in the x-rays. I didn't see any calculus, you know, spurs in the x-rays. So again, I'm like, why is she like, sometimes I feel that dentists want to give local anesthetic anesthetic just for the heck of it. I don't know. Or the patients hear that we can give them local anesthetic and they won't feel pain. So they just want it. I wouldn't want a needle if I didn't have to have one. But anyways, so that's what I'm thinking is, okay, well, we're going to give her local anesthetic. All right. And the appointment was for only quad one. So I'm thinking, okay, her teeth look fine. Like what's the big deal here? What am I missing? But then as soon as I checked with my explorer, oh my God, she had heavy black, tenacious calculus, rings of calculus, pretty much around all of her teeth. Not thick enough to show up in the x-ray though, but it was hard. Like I could tell that that was going to be hard to remove. So either she builds up calculus really fast in a year. Yes, a year is long, but not long to build up that type. I mean, I don't know, but I've seen patients before who haven't come in in three years and they don't have that thick, tenacious tartar. But anyways, um, so yeah, it's a good thing I checked because here I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be so easy. So the moral of the story is even if, if things look healthy, check underneath the gums because they might not be. So anyways, so I'm glad that the dentist froze quad one because I needed it. I had a full hour to clean quad one and I needed it. Her gums were bleeding so much. I couldn't see a thing. So that, that will show you very unhealthy. Um, I did a probe to just kind of see what I was, what, um, what I was working with in quad one, five millimeter pockets. Her interiors had threes and fours, So that's too high. So she needs a good cleaning for sure. So I used the piezo first because keep in mind too, she has local anesthetic. So she's frozen. She can't feel anything. So do not think, oh, I don't want to hurt her. You know, she's frozen. Do what you have to do. So I use the piezo first. Um, amazing. I And then I moved to my hand scalers and the gums were just bleeding so much. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything. So it's all by feel bleeding so much, but I do always ask the patients how they are too. So I'll clean maybe two teeth and then go, Oh, how is everything so far? Oh, okay. Awesome. Or, you know, Oh, it feels fine. You know, always ask them and keep in mind too, with all of her bleeding, you would think that she'd be uncomfortable. She'd be sore, but she was under local anesthetic. So she didn't, she, she didn't feel that. Right. So but anyways, just so much bleeding, I was using piezo, I was, I was using hand scalers, piezos, hand scalers, back and forth, because I couldn't see. At least with the piezo, I could see, but with the hand, um, hand, hand scalers, in my opinion, you can get in there a little bit more. So I do like to use both. But every time I took out my hand scalers, I couldn't see, because the gums were just bleeding so much. But anyways, I did do a great job. I cleaned all of quad one. I sat the patient up and you know, I like to ask them how, how they did. She's, she's, um, she's never had local anesthetic with her teeth cleanings before. So I did let her know. Mm -hmm. So it will feel pretty frozen for the next couple hours. It could be half an hour. It could be two hours. It could be six hours. Everybody's different, but just eat soft foods tonight because you can't feel, or sorry, it was the right side. You, um, you can't feel, um, the one side. So just be careful. If you drink anything too hot, you might not be able to feel it until later. And then you might go, ow, I burned my lip, you know? So, so we froze quad one. So her lip would feel numb. Um, and then I did say, you know, plus just so you know, as I was cleaning, the gums were bleeding a lot. So that's a sign of them not being healthy but you have come to the right place because with us cleaning everything that will help to make things healthy again. So see what I did there. So I told her bad news, the gums were bleeding a lot, really unhealthy, but I'm happy to see you because I can make things so much better. I always like to give them positive news because if I'm that hygienist who says to them, your gums are bleeding so much. I couldn't see a thing. It was disgusting. This can't happen they're not going to want to come back. If I was being yelled at, I wouldn't want to, 
I, I wouldn't want to come back. Like, who are you? Are you my mother? I would not want to come back. So I like to be honest though and tell her the gums were bleeding a lot. Um, and I said, so if you, um, as you should be, but I said, start to floss every single night. But as you're doing that, the gums will still bleed a lot. But don't be alarmed. It's just because the gums need to toughen up. So please keep up with it. The bleeding will become less and less once we have everything clean. Okay. Um, but I am so happy that you came in today because we are, we are off to a great start. I am excited for you to have everything cleaned up, you know, at some point because it will look amazing, but don't forget to brush and, um, to brush and floss. So, you know, I kind of do that. It helps you guys. And then the patients leave happy. They know that you are helping them. They know that they need to do good work at home. They know all of that, okay? So I left that day feeling pretty good. I'm happy that I had that harder case at the end of the day because, you know, it's trickier to do perio because you have to get right in there, and it was just nice to have that at the end of the day. So that wasn't too bad, you guys. So yeah, I did take about 45 minutes. So thank you guys for watching. Please comment below and let me know your thoughts. You know, are you a student who's nervous to see a difficult patient? Are you still in clinic seeing a difficult patient right now where you have to tell them your teeth are horrible? What are you doing? But always be positive. Or are you a dental hygienist who's like, ah, that was easy? Or tell me some weird patient, you know, experiences that you've had. You know, I still don't understand why patients get so concerned about a complete oral exam. Maybe it's the name, complete oral exam. Maybe they think we're doing a complete exam on them or something. I have no idea. But just some weird things, right? So it's nice to talk about. It's nice to hear comments. Let me know. And if you guys like these videos, I will keep doing them. So make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.